my name is Steven Lurson and I'm just going to go ahead and get started working on another painting as an example of different variations of Abstract One, the video. So I'm just going to do the same techniques but with a completely different color palette idea. So I want the background, instead of being cools, I want them or, or cool blues and greens like I used last time. This time I'm going to use my one inch flat brush. Uh, my palette for my fluid paints. I'm going to use a little Payne's Gray. Burnt Umber Light. These are Golden Fluid Acrylics. Quinacridone Nickel Ozo Gold. And Yellow Ochre. Kind of classic neutral colors. I wet my brush just a little bit. That's going to help the paint flow. I want it lighter up top and darker on the bottom. And that way I can achieve a smoother transition between a variety of colors. Now some, a lot of my students do this. If you notice that creates all these little brush marks. What you want are long brush strokes so that you don't get all those little brush marks. If you're going for a smooth transition, that's what you want. And we're back. I've gotten rid of all my brushes and all that kind of stuff, clean that aside. What we have here is the canvas, just how we left it. I have my almost brand new, I've used it in the last time I used this was an abstract painting one. So this golden uh, gel medium. Technically, I don't think this is a gel, however. Uh, it's light molding paste, more of a paste. The difference being that it's fluffy and white and it dries white, it does not dry clear. Uh, that is if you don't put any color in it, that is. Uh, so I have light molding paste. I have a number of variety of sizes of palette knives. This is the largest one. I'm going to work from the bigger first to the smaller working down and that way, that way all of my new layers will lay on top of the previous layers without completely covering them up. If I started with the smallest palette knife and started making all these lines and then went over it with paint with this, I would have wasted that thin layer because it would just cover it all up few drops of that. Now if I just use that alone and mix it in, as you will see, you're going to see kind of a uh, lavender. Why is that? Because the molding paste, the light molding paste, is white and white lightens up any dark color, makes it a tint. Any color plus white is a tint of that color. Any color plus gray is a tone of that color. Any color plus black is a shade of that color. So you have shades, tones, and tints. Alright, so I think that's a beautiful color. That on top of that is too intense right now. So, as we know from the color wheel, opposite colors are called complementary colors. Violet is the opposite of yellow. Now by mixing complementary colors you get mud if you do it in too much, but if you just do it a little bit, just a drop of that, and it's got a bubble on it, and a drop of that. It's going to mute the purple and make it more of an earth tone. It's going to take some of that vibrancy out. And as you can see, it's still, in my opinion, a beautiful color, but it's not the same. It's different. And I'm going to keep it like this because I actually like to have the swirl of color so that it's not completely mixed in. So I'm going to start off with some heavy fat layers right there. Now instead of using this, I'm going to mix a little bit of, let's see, a little bit more purple into it before I use the rest. Load up that palette knife with a lot of material, a lot of paint. I'm not smashing the top edge. I'm leaving it really chunky. So the top edge is sticking off the canvas a bit. I think that's a, the better angle. And as I continue to work this way, I will develop thick layers of paint. 
I'm really liking this technique of just touching, tapping the, the blade of the palette knife into a color and having it overlap. Just on the inside of the haze, I'm not getting out to the outer edges. Just putting a little bit of fog, foggy atmospheric quality in here. Just kind of pouncing. I think I like this a lot.